If you've ever tried getting into a trading card game, you know it can be incredibly daunting. From the large financial investment of the serious metal level players, down to the casual player only able to get a few packs at a time. Either way you look at it, it can still be incredibly challenging. So I'll be pushing my skills and a bit of luck to their absolute limit to make the best deck I can. The goal is that by the end of one year, I will be able to top one of the largest tournaments in the TCG. The catch? The catch is I must do this on a mere $20 a week budget. But not only this, also I cannot trade or buy singles, only sealed product. The only exception being for each match I win, I can make a single trade for a single card from a box opened right here on the channel. If you want to take part in the series in either a remote duel match or have a box opened here on the channel and potentially a trade conducted, then head on over to my Patreon and become a member to gain permanent access to my personal Discord server. This is Digimon on a budget. So this week we got five packs here being blessed by the baby gods. Uh, hopefully we're about to get some awesome pulls. I decided to skip over getting another deck as the only cards we could really use out of it immediately were the Kakadas' Breath as the Plesiomon I don't think is going to do us any good until we can get our hands on an Omnimon and then we'll, uh, we'll make that plunge for the second deck. All right, let's get into these. All right, pack number one here. Hopefully we're gonna pull something amazing. Something a little more useful than we pulled last week. Last week's pulls weren't the greatest, but we didn't have that many packs to work with, so. Fingers crossed that this is gonna be the one for us. All right, try to keep that back card hidden. Okay. Where's our blues at? Don't tell me it's gonna be another week with no blues. All right, well, come on. All right, cool. We got an Kakumon. That's that's good at least. And then just a Kari. So hopefully we can get, put that uh, a Kakumon to some good use. Of course we could use an Omnimon, uh, but a little more immediate use would be uh, a a Metal Garumon from the set. I think that would definitely be the the better option. Just for the immediate pulls. Dolphmon. Hintmon. Uh, boring Storm is very boring. Uh, come on. Bergemon. Izzy. And, oh, uh, that's a cool War Greymon. Not really going to help us out too much. But, hey, I think he's a good, uh, a good card for uh, trades in the future. Next pack. Oh, Volcanic Dramon, definitely a good uh, utility card to have, so that'll probably go in the deck pretty soon, just to kill all those rookies. We haven't really dealt with any rookies yet on the channel, but uh, he's not a bad rookie to have, just as filler in case we need to run that. Something shiny back there, I didn't quite see what it was. Uh, Yokomon and, ooh, Rust Tyranimon. Uh, definitely a fan favorite, maybe we can, uh, Try to get some trades out of him. We'll see, though, uh, out of the box opening so far on the channel. Right, great tornado. Uh, purple Garumon. No. Oh. Pumpkin Mon. Wow, is that another shiny back there? really hard to kind of keep it hidden slash angelmon uh mon 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 uh, i'm not really overly a fan of him i mean he's a a rookie blocker but i don't like paying memory for my rookies uh, i like those as my like free draws so probably won't use him hi angelmon another ikakumon and we pulled an omnimon yeah baby luck has done it again and uh that's awesome. That'll go straight into the deck. That is a huge pull. Oh man, I am so excited for that. 
This is gonna help the deck tremendously. We need to get a few more of these, but hey, this is on the path, uh, the right path at least. So huge pull right there. And uh, hey, I mean, those are pretty good odds considering the first packs that we opened on the channel weren't really that great. Uh, so far out of four packs, we pulled three super rares. One being an Omnimon, which is awesome. One pack to go. Now we're going to be able to top that again. Uh, we still do have our secrets and altars that we, or altar arts that we haven't pulled yet. So, but I don't see us getting anything in this pack right after an Omni one. I don't see being able to top that. But can't even pull anything of use. So nothing of use at all out of that pack. But hey, I mean that's just kind of how the breaks are, right? You can't get something out of every pack, especially when you know you pull the best card in the set. So. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at, see what we want to change up in the deck to uh, to add in some of this stuff here we got. All right. Also, this week's trade, we traded that Piedmon away for a uh, Metal Garurumon here. So this is kind of the deck's main strategy until we eventually will switch over to the Omnimon build, the blue Omnimon build. Uh, but for right now, it's mostly we're trying to build up that awesome Metal Greymon or Metal Garuru strategy. Uh, where we uh, can keep playing cards from him, uh, playing where we untap with the other Guru Mon, things like that. So this will be our main strategy for now with, the, of course, the added Omni Mon for when it pulls off. So this was the uh, our trade of the week. All right, so last week we went undefeated. And uh, as a bonus for going three matches without being uh, beaten here, we got a couple extra packs this week. Uh, these are just the, the dash packs. And uh, hoping for something like a Gabumon, that'd be great. Uh, this looks like just going to be the Agumon, unfortunately. Uh, awesome artwork. I do love the artwork. Unfortunately, doesn't quite work for the style of deck we're playing. Although, I think it'll definitely have some probably good use in the uh, in future metas for sure. Uh, second pack here. Uh, uh, oh, Machine Dramon. All right. Uh, again, nothing that's going to help us here. Probably some good trade value though in the future here. Uh, Machine Dramon is definitely a pretty popular black card. So uh, nothing that's gonna be useful for us, but oh well. All right, so this is what we're swapping out for the deck. Uh, I felt like I was running I was at 16 rookies. It felt like just a little too many. So without us running kind of a pure rookie rush deck, it seems a little unnecessary. So I'm cutting those down to 14 and uh, swapping out two of the vanilla Ikakumons for two of the Ikakumons with the Inheritable. Uh, the only difference is five more uh, you know, play from hand, or one more play from hand to a total of five. But I think the Inheritable of this Digimon uh, can't be blocked by your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. Great for when you know they play those hard play blockers you know, for five, which definitely have seen come up. I've done it as well as my opponents have done it. So I think it's a pretty likely scenario where it could happen. So swapping in for these Akakumons I think is a little bit better than the Vanillas. Um, as well as I had a odd number of champions here. So I swapped it, I pulled one and added in that Volcanic Dramon just as a sort of option card, uh, just utility in general. I didn't have much else that I could swap in to keep my ratios like I wanted them. So uh, that's why I kind of made that balance there a little bit. And uh, of course, like I said, I pulled out the two rookies to help balance it, and then in doing so, put in our Omnimon and our Metal Garurumon. So that's the uh, that's what the changes for this week. Let's see what we can do with it. All right, so uh, game one here, uh, blue versus purple here. Uh, had a hard play that Grizzlymon for five. That was pretty brutal. So gave them a lot of memory to work with. Uh, they pass it back over to me relatively easily, though. They they do get a fair amount on the field, though. Uh, setting up here, I've got my uh, my Garurumon, trying to get that Metal Garurumon uh, play going. We'll see if it happens or not. Uh, swings in with the the Devimon, and uh, man, all these Vengeance plays are so dangerous. Uh, I let it slide because I think I can just block the Tapirumon and at least keep my uh, Grizzlymon on field. Uh, thankfully, we do a trade, which was nice, so I don't actually have to deal with the Vengeance. So that definitely saves my bacon. Uh, right here, hammer spark in here, just trying to be as uh, 
memory efficient as I can and not give them too terribly much. Uh, finally do get to drop that uh, Metal Garurum on here. And uh, since I didn't pass the turn back over uh, just yet, I attack with it. Get the, the nice combo there, restanding because of the regular Garurumon. Uh, discarding the uh, evolution source on the uh, Garurumon, which is nice. And, uh, and then get a swing again. And uh, just dropping the mat there. Still not a fan of playing the mats. Unfortunately, it's kind of all, you know, I, all I've got that fits that slot. Here, he drops a Piedmon, and uh, this is the first time I actually get to encounter a Piedmon. And, yeah, dropping his blocker and the Devimon back, pretty scary. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of misplay there, and I take out the, the Devimon, not realizing that the Piedmon also has Vengeance. Uh, so, uh, swinging in there, getting that double attack, so he, he eats the blocker. And, uh, and uh, so not a whole lot of plays left there. Swing again and uh, drop the uh, Leo Mon. Uh, here he kind of baits me. I didn't really see this coming because, uh, again, I forgot that the Vengeance existed on the Piedmon. So I go to block this guy, right, from hitting my shields. And then he swings in and just drops my Omnimon with that Vengeance play. And I was definitely kicking myself pretty hard on that one after I realized uh, that that misplay there. Uh, then he eats two of them. I think that was also kind of a misplay on his part. He probably should have played that first before I blocked. Um, just to get a little bit more value out of it, I think. Uh, dropping my Metal Guru Room on again. So, uh, hoping I can get a good play out. He drops a second Piedmon. This Piedmon is putting in some serious work here. Uh, again, dropping the blocker and the, uh, the the Devimon. He could have dropped double blocker, which would have been pretty painful too. But I think the smarter play was definitely getting that Devimon. Uh, so, I end up dropping this Volcanic Dramon just because I do not want to deal with that again. Uh, gives him a lot of memory to work with. Uh, in turn there, but at least I should be able to push for game next round as long as he doesn't play another blocker. And then, yeah, he wasn't able to play a blocker, so we had enough on field to push for game. Uh, game two was just a lot of just slowly building, a little bit of poking. There was no real big crazy plays here uh, for a good bit. Uh, just, like I said, a lot of rookie poking and, and champion poking. And nothing, not a whole lot getting through. Uh, here, this was pretty brutal. He attacks, gets me to play my blocker, and uh, again, dropping two of uh, my blocker and then one of my rookies there. So, you know, that two for one trade. I guess it's kind of a two for two because he does have to activate it, an option, but yeah, it's still uh, pretty brutal. Uh, here, we just kind of keep poking with the, the Plesiomon, just clearing out his security slowly. Which is pretty nice. It's kind of hard to get over just a raw 12k that's on field. So. And here, not trying to give them a whole lot of memory to work with, but get, trying to get that draw factor, and then they just weren't able to come back. Uh, match two here, uh, this was pretty crazy. Uh, she wasn't able to do a whole lot at first, but then really starts to ramp up here. Plays the seven heavens for seven, minus 10k. Uh, on my volcanic Dramon. So uh, so drops that down. Really, she's against the ropes here, and this kind of comes out of nowhere. So definitely uh, good on her. She does a pretty good job of clearing my field here uh, as she, when she gets back into the corner. Uh, plays the Heaven's Charm as well, which drops 2k off of uh, a Digimon, puts it on my uh, Metal Guru Ramon, and then is able to swing over it. Uh, drops mine down to, to 9k there. So uh, that was pretty great uh, on her part. And at this point, she has no shields left. Uh, so she's just trying to clear what she can. Uh, she knows that she's going to get that one that's going to come through no matter what from that Guru Mon. She can't stop it. She doesn't have a blocker to, to stop it. So she's just trying to poke, see what she could do. 
and and hope for the best there has to pass turn and give me all that memory three and then the plus one from the mat so at this point i can just push for game uh game two here uh really slow like not a whole lot was happening but i just like walked right up into my metal gururumon uh, never got really much of a chance to attack. I know I didn't want to waste it because I had the Omnimon as well in my hand. Uh, I kind of don't think it was quite necessary to play it here. Uh, I know she could have evolved up into something a little more scary, but I don't think it was too much to worry about. Uh, here it plays that Angel Woman, gets the, the security back. She, I think she's definitely probably the, the best. Uh, I believe that's a level 5. Uh, what is that, the ultimate? Probably the best ultimate for yellow. Uh, and then also plays the Slash Angemon, which is also a great card. Uh, drops, oh, what, did, what does she drop? Oh yeah, she drops it onto the Grizzly Mon, which clears the Grizzly Mon with the Slash Angemon effects. Then evolves into the Seraphi Mon, who when attacking lowers one by 4k. Swings into the Kaku Mon, and what does she uh, lower? Was it the Volcanic Dramon that she lowered by 4,000? Right, swings into uh, uh, swings into stack there, but then the uh, the Digivolution sources so put the 4K on Seraphim from Seraphimon onto the, the Ikaku, and then the Slash Angemon dropped it by another 1,000, which killed the Ikakumon. So, uh, pretty awesome combo there, really. So here she's setting up a, a really strong board. Uh, I've got no security left. I've got no uh, defense here at all. Uh, I'm definitely sweating. Ends up just playing a tamer to pass the turn. And uh, and then she realized after the fact that she had in hand a card that reduces my security to minus three. So I couldn't have attacked with the Omnimon. Uh, I still could have attacked with my two rookies. However, I did in my head kind of misplay here. Uh, I should have raised the Gomamon. If I hadn't raised the Gomamon and she had played that, then... Uh, she would have definitely taken that, and we would have had to go to game three. So that game two was super close there. Uh, just a couple, like, very minute things that could have changed the changed things. Uh, match three here, uh, again, just kind of building up into uh, our little basic towers here. And uh, I just start swinging like crazy with this Metal Guru one. He's got a security attack plus one, and he attacks twice. So that's four security we just cleared through. Swing with a rookie and then swing with another rookie for the game. This was a fast game. It was it was it was just nuts. Uh, game two here, uh, same thing. We we really ramp up into our big towers really fast. Uh, I dropped the Zudo Mon just because I know how terrifying that War Gray Mon can be. So I don't want uh, it having all that security attack. So I at least take one security bonus off of it with the Zudo Mon. And uh, knowing I can't really do much else, I'm just start poking as fast as I can with this Plesiomon. And uh, and then just go right up into another one. So trying to do as much as I can, as fast as I can. Uh, because I know this War Greymon's about to start tearing through me. And, uh, and there he goes with all the, the security uh, attack bonuses. Uh, even swings with the, uh, the Agumon rookie there. drops the Gaia Force on my Plessimon. He sees that the big stack, uh, he probably feels the uh, the Omnimon coming. Although I don't think at this point uh, he's, he realizes I'm even running an Omnimon yet. So, uh, but yeah, he saw that big stack and was pretty scared of it. So took it out with the, the Gaia Force, even for that big, big memory cost. Uh, I realized that I had to kill his poor uh, Agumon with my Plessimon just because he could have gained me next turn. Uh, there he attacks in the stack with the War Greymon, revealing the Omnimon. Uh, kind of lackluster when it gets revealed like that, but then attacks for game with the uh, the blocker. So we go into game three again this week, and uh, uh, I ramp up right into the Metal Gurumon really fast here, thankfully. So I just kind of start poking here, seeing see what damage I can do. Uh, I see that he's got kind of starting to build up a thicker board, so uh, I need to either start getting in some, some damage to make him play a little more defensively, or find a way to slow him down a bit. So I drop this uh, Grizzly Mon for five, uh, putting him at three. Not a whole, not a crazy amount to work with, 
but but enough. Uh, saving my Grizzly Mon for that other Gray Mon because I don't want that uh, that big thick stack of uh, uh, inheritables underneath a War Gray Mon potentially. So I try to keep all of that down as much as possible. So he realizes that too. He doesn't want to lose his War Gray Mon. Uh, again, I start poking, and again this week, uh, Gaia Force in the stack takes out my boss. Uh, passes back to me here. Got kind of a thicker field. Uh, so do they, and uh, and he starts really kind of just working through me here. I'm uh, a little bit worried. Uh, trading when possible out of security is always nice. Uh, passes back to me. Not a whole lot to work with here, so I, I just go really blocker heavy. Gaia Force is one of my blockers because he's that desperate. Thankfully, it passes it back to me. And uh, here, uh, I'm pretty sure I can take game, but I'm gonna. He gave me all that memory to work with, so I definitely want to use it uh, to be as safe as possible here. Go into the Wereguru Mon, which gives me the Ikaku Mon inheritable, so he can't block me with his blocker, which is nice. So I can just get a straight swing uh, on this, just in case it's something that I need to keep my Wereguru Mon for next turn. Uh, but it's not, and uh, he's going to block it, and then we attack for game to him uh, with the, the same trick that he used against us and take it with the, with the blocker for the win. All right, so our series challenges here is uh, not only are we trying to top that uh, national level event, you know, COVID, you know, allowing, but in addition to that, we've got some win streaks here to help us along. First week, let us get that uh, that three win streak there, which allowed us for that bonus pack, uh, which was the uh, the dash packs. It wasn't anything too crazy, uh, but that one's knocked out. Uh, this week, we managed to get the six win streak already, which is pretty crazy. So that'll allow us to get a bonus trade in this week, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get something extra good that'll help us along and uh, and finish off our deck a little bit more. And uh, hopefully, week three, we'll be able to take that uh, win streak of nine. Pretty crazy to imagine. We've had a lot of close games here lately, especially against those War Greymon, the, the kind of red rush strategies. They're just so aggressive. They can play so fast that it's just hard to react in time. Uh, hopefully, we can hold out against the players like that. We'll just have to wait and see. Also, for every like these videos get, for the, uh, the time that it's up between videos. Uh, we add all those likes together and then we add that much, uh, that many cents total to our budget for the week. And again, this is uh, accumulating, so even if we don't spend all of the budget that week, it'll continue to add up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please support the channel in any way you can. Just liking the video or subscribing is a huge, huge help. And if you really want to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon. There's a link in the description below for it. You can get access to my Discord server as well as some other cool incentives. Also, check out my official merch store. There's a link in the description below for my Teespring account. You get access to all my uh, cool merch that I've got on there as well as some other cool stuff, cool phone cases, that sort of thing. But like I said, any kind of support is always appreciated. Just simply liking the video can go a very, very long way for me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.